Today, I'm with Fred Exlander, attorney at law. He's our real estate go-to attorney in Broome County. And we are talking about this new, this new uh, settlement with the National Association of Realtors and how it impacts consumers. There's been a lot of things on the news. Fred, thanks for being here today in your office. I'm here today, right? That's right. Okay, so. I'm happy to be here, John. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it, because we need some answers here. Okay. Well, uh, what happened at the end of last year is that a lawsuit was settled uh, with the National Association of Realtors, NAR, and what that lawsuit and the settlement indicated was that real estate commissions charged by realtors, real estate brokers and realtors have to be negotiated between the parties. Now this, on one level, is not really a new concept. As you know, John, when you uh, list properties and you talk to sellers, it's always been negotiable with respect to right. what the commission was, especially on the sales side. Right. I think where this is gonna impact uh, consumers going forward is more of the buy side of the transaction where sellers no longer can be compelled in any way and that's the language of the of the decision here of the court to uh, pay a, a commission of any amount of money some of which goes to a buyer's realtor a buyer and their realtor have to have their own discussion about commissions and what the buyer is willing to pay and what the realtor is willing right. to receive and what services that realtor are willing to uh, provide given whatever the commission is that is right. negotiated. And that negotiation, of course, has to be voluntary, can't be compelled, no arms can be twisted or anything like that. And it must be disclosed uh, in writing as to what the ultimate decision is among these parties, the realtor and the buyer, as to what the commission is that will be paid. Right, so as this gets implemented into our marketplace, mm -hmm. I think that we're going to, you know, really get a lot of things sorted out just by doing it. That's correct. But, but I think that, um, you know, I had a guy trying to, well, he was listing his house, um, and he said, uh, well, it's going to be, you know, 3% uh, to you. I'll pay you 3%, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay, I'm not going to, you know, pay anything else, you know, so... I say, well, you know, the way that, uh, you know, previously things worked is that we would say, okay, there's going to be a co-broke, another buyer's agent fee, and that would be, uh, you know, 2% or 3% or whatever the amount of money is. Mm -hmm. And be because of that, you know, we used to include it in the multiple listing service, and we would advertise it out to all the agents, and they'd say, okay, you know, and I, I don't know if we're allowed to post anything now in terms of a buyer's uh, uh, part of the transaction. Uh, so the buyer's going to be in a tougher situation, as is the buyer's broker, mm -hmm. because they have to sort that out mm -hmm. at the beginning of their relationship and go forward, you know. Uh, you're absolutely right about that. I think where the complications are going to arise is more on that buy side right. and that discussion between the buyer and the buyer's realtor. Now, just so your uh, viewing audience understands, the rules that we are talking about today are implemented on August uh, 17th right. uh, of, uh, of this year. So as we tape this today, it's mid-July, so about a month from uh, right. uh, w our discussion here right. today. So it doesn't implement until then, so we're still under the old rules until then for about another month. Yeah. But the realtors with the, the buyers is, is going to be the complicated situation here. <laughs> right. The reality is, is uh, you know, it's, you can't just say to a buyer's agent, uh, well, we're only going to pay you 1% or we're only going to pay you 5 bucks. You know, like wait till you get two feet of snow on your, on your sidewalk and tell the guy shoveling it that you're going to, well, I'm only paying you five bucks. Mm -hmm. See how that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because that's not how things are going to happen. You yeah. know, people have to get paid and, and the buyers need to be represented. It's so important. It is, and especially for the first time home buyers. This is where I think the, the, the rubber is really going to meet the road because first time home buyers, as you know, they need a lot of help. Uh, yeah. Whether it's from you as a realtor or me as an attorney or 
uh, inspectors or whatever, those first time home buyers are really the people who are going to be most challenged, I believe, by this settlement that, that came about. Yeah. And the difference as of the 17th of August going forward and now is that the, the seller cannot be compelled to pay X commission, some of which goes to the buyer's agent. That's how we do it now, but that is totally up for negotiation right. at the present time. Right. I, th I think that the, the listing agency or the listing agent can talk to his seller and say, look, when this comes up, this is what your expectations should be. And when exactly. someone is showing a property, I don't know exactly what the rules are in terms of, you know, like what can I tell a buyer's agent or what, you know, but... They need, they're going to have, to show anything, they have to have a buyer's agreement now. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. With, yeah. And uh, so that agency relationship is nailed down at mm -hmm. the beginning when they're with the buyers, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, well, what's really important for your viewers to understand is that uh, sellers can't be compelled to pay uh, anything to the buyer's agent, but they can voluntarily do that. That's right. And when the um, uh, home that's being sold is in that, shall we say, a first-time home buyer price range, that seller is got to understand that a first-time home buyer uh, just doesn't have the cash to be able to uh, pay a, a real estate commission. That's so and if true. they want to move their house, they might have to negotiate all you want, but I think you're going to have to negotiate to the uh, extent of pretty much what we're doing today, and that is uh, offer to pay the buyer's agent's commission. Right. A lot of times when it's a for sale by owner, you, you know, I, I run into somebody that's going to sell their house on their own. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in a, in a really uh, tight market, you know, not a lot of listings and the properties are selling fast. That is a common occurrence. I've seen it happen many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, but the, the, they always think, well, I'm going to save, you know, like say they think everything's 6%, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to save 6%. So are you? And this buyer over here who's looking for for sale by owners, right, he thinks he's saving 6%. That's 12%. That's a pretty expensive commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the math doesn't quite work that way. Yeah, right. But, uh, uh, this is the, the, the problem with the decision. And not to, I don't offer an opinion about whether the decision is good or bad, but I think it does put in the mind of the uh, buying and selling community that there's money to be saved somehow uh, in real estate commissions. Well, we'll see maybe here and there, but I think in the end, if you want to get the service that you expect and that you have uh, come to expect over the last decades, right. Uh, you're pretty much going to be probably at the same place you are now but, anyway. And the point that you made is really, I think, the most uh, uh, immediate problem, and that is buyers generally don't have any money left over after they close a property. So somebody's got to pay that buyer's agent, and if, if they're not getting their, uh, you know, if, you, if the seller isn't paying them with the proceeds of the sale, which... You, generally speaking, there's a lot more cash on that side of the train, mm -hmm. on that side of the table. Somebody's got to pay that buyer's agent, and you know the the seller or the buyer is not going to have that kind of liquidity. Right. And another thing too that your viewers uh, would want to factor in is uh, uh, mortgage companies, banks are not going to factor in as as a cost of purchasing the payment of a, a broker's commission. Uh, that's not going to be added in as like uh, right. you know points and right, but uh, it could evolve. Like it it could, could evolve. It could way. evolve where they don't address the buyer's agent, but they address what the buyer has to produce in terms of cash, or maybe they'll you know work some uh, smoke and mirrors. As time goes on, we'll see how this matures, and you might be right that, yeah, the, that yeah. the lenders will kind of get on board too and help out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but uh, you know. Or if they want to call me, all the banks can call me. <laughs> or, or <laughs> that me, is or funny, me. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay. thank you, Fred. Okay, I appreciate John, your help. Nice seeing you. Okay. okay.